Okay, so this sounds like a good project, but to make it happen, there have to be a few shared assumptions by all of the team members to make sure that we have open standard building information that we can trust. So let's talk about those assumptions. The first assumption is that the product type templates, the generic templates, are free. They're going to be available free as long as there is a SPY project and each version of each of these templates as the templates get updated over time will also be provided for free so that if people have to go back and refer to an earlier version it will be there. The next is the process of defining these templates is an open process. Anyone with a stake in ensuring their properties get uh, uh, found in the standard product type template may participate. Now the caveat to that is if you fail to participate you don't get to whine about the result. So we'd like you to participate early to make sure that your voice is heard and we get the best result. Now we know that the best result is not going to happen overnight. So this is an iterative process so if you don't want to engage in the first round and you want to engage in the second round you can because there will be a second round because we know no version of these products are temp uh, these templates are going to be perfect. I mean, heck, there's new products coming up every day. So we have to be iterative in our approach. But what we hope is each round gets 80 or better percent correct. And then eventually, you know, we're going to get close to perfect after a couple of rounds. So I think there's another uh, shared assumption here that everyone on the team has to uh, respect, which is the value of the information and who provides it. From the point of view of the SPY project, manufacturers are the authors of the information and they provide the value. SPY does not specify any required publication requirement or format other than the open standard format. Uh, manufacturers are welcome to publish in any way they wish. If they wish to pay a third party to publish their data, fine. If they wish to have it be on open Google search, that can be done as well. If they wish to only have it on their own website, that's completely up to them. Because this activity of electronic product catalogs has been done badly in the past and actually failed. And the reason is, is because of the lack of respect for the people that provide the value. Just to give you an example of how backwards it is. Um, if you were Stephen King, you know, a very famous author, and you went to a publishing company, and you gave them a manuscript, would the publishing company ask you to pay them to publish the novel? Certainly not. The publisher publishes the novel for a cut of the income because the value is provided by the author. In the same way, manufacturers are in control of the publication of their own information. And the publication issues associated with SPY data is not part of the SPY project. Finally, the publication formats and the context for these publications uh, cannot be done in a proprietary way. So if someone tries to engage in the SPY project for the purpose of cornering the publication or the production or the assisting of companies to create this information in a way that allows them or that they think is going to allow them to get some kind of uh, uh, corner or competitive advantage over others attempting to do the same thing, then those folks are not going to be invited uh, to come back to the project. Because if we don't have these five basic shared assumptions, then we're not going to have open data. It's not going to be improved over time. And we're not going to be able to trust the result. And that's ultimately what's required. All right, so we know the goals of the project. We know the context in which the project is going to be done. So let's talk about how the templates are actually put together. For any given type of product, the template is created uh, based on three kinds of inputs. The first input are the inputs to the open standards that are going to be used as the basis for creating these structured sets of building information. And Building Smart International provides those formats. The first format is ISO 
16739. It's the Industry Foundation cla Class Model. The format for the distribution of those models includes the STEP Physical File Format and IFC XML. Now the STEP format is a well understood manufacturing format used uh, in many many different kinds of industries. Also we'll end up having dictionaries of this information so that we can identify the differences in terminology between countries and that is the industry foundation class for, dic uh, for, for dictionaries. The IFD standard. So these are the standards upon which we're going to base our work. We also have standards associated with how we classify the information and those are regional standards in the United States. Construction Specification Institute has Master Format, Uniformat, and the Emerging Omniclass Standard. British Standards Institute has theirs, Canadians have theirs, and others have other standards. So flexible classification is an important idea of the SPY template so that we have a standard dictionary classification that's appropriate to specific regions and then the specific properties themselves are identified by manufacturers manufacturing and professional associations regional practice codes and other kinds of criteria so with these three kinds of information we can move forward to create SPY templates. So now let's talk about the process through which uh, the templates are created. Product templates just don't come out of thin air. You know, people just don't go into a back room and make these things up. There's a lot of knowledge in our industry about this information. So the sources of that information include professional associations, trade associations, manufacturers, those that create codes and criteria and standards and specifications and also people that make classifications. Now those folks often are not able to talk to each other efficiently. The Building Smart Alliance can provide some facilitation in that uh, effort and ultimately the facilitation becomes based on the technical standards that the Building Smart Alliance can bring of course, these standards, as we've mentioned before, including IFC, IFC XML, the COBE presentation of that same IFC model, these are things that can be used then to develop uh, these basic templates. Uh, as these groups reach consensus over time, that consensus is published uh, through the product guide, and the consensus adoption then is mapped into manufacturers' databases. The product guide will publish the IFC product type templates. The manufacturer's databases then publish the product templates. Maybe we could even have a fancy name for them like IFC cut sheet. I don't know. You know, we have a PDF cut sheet and an IFC cut sheet. It seems like an interesting idea. And then let's talk about how we might use the information. So the generic product type templates are used in design and specification tools. And the IFC cut sheets are used in the very same tools. Tools to help designers select their products, tools to help specifiers define additional details necessary to meet the designer's intent, procurement tools, builder's tools so that the proper products are, are delivered, and operator's tools to make sure that those products can be maintained over time. 